Hey guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at this knife. This is the Fura Water Ripples. I believe uh, they're trying to refer to the handle scale here being ripply like uh, gently flowing water. And we've got a real funky, uh, I'm going to call it an upswept sheep foot blade. I would call it a Warncliffe if the uh, cutting edge were right flat, but because it's curved, it's got a belly on it. I'm calling this a sheep's foot upswept blade. It looks a little bit like a moustache, monsieur moustache, or a little bit like a smile. No. Funny thing is about this knife is it's thickest here and here in this dimension from spine to edge and spine to belly. It's thick here, thick here, and then it gets thin and then back thick on the ends. A somewhat unique style knife, if you ask me. Titanium handle scales comes in three colors. This purple, which is the uh, color that is in highest demand. So they're charging full price for this purple version. You can get it in a black and in a gray, a blue, not a gray, a black and a blue. And uh, those are on special. Those have either 19% off or 24% off. So if you're interested in this and you're not sure of the purple color, hey, one of those other colors is a better deal by several dollars. So... It's a frame lock, uh, lock bar insert, so a nice steel. They say that it's a D2 blade, and we're going to talk about that. Flipper tab and roller bearings. So stay tuned for the full review of this guy coming at you right now. So here we go. Why do I like this knife so much? I don't know, but I do like it a fair bit. It is both simple and yet fancy at the same time. It is very functional, you know, nice long belly, decent tip, feels good in the hand, and it makes it a relatively good cutting knife. I like it. My hands are large. They border on extra large. Just about any kind of grip. Uh, in European sizes, that's between 10 and 11. Uh, so a reverse grip, comfortable on this knife. My thumb fits over that end quite well. Very comfortable. Uh, reverse, reverse. That works as well. You needed to do, you know, some drawing kind of cuts. Uh, your regular, you know, fist grip works. Pinch grip. Sneak up. You know, kind of grip. Pretty much any kind of grip you want works very well because it's a very basic shape with chamfered edges. So you can see this flat piece of steel right here, and then you've got that edge that's, you know, the corner is cut off. That's called a chamfer. So you've got the chamfered edges, a little bit of texture over here, and it's just a comfortable knife in the hand. Comfortable for people with smaller hands than mine. And for people that have slightly larger hands, I think they'll also find this knife fairly comfortable. All right, time for the dimensions. Cutting edge, eight centimeters, 3.17 inches blade length. So that's from the tip of the blade here to the closest point on the handle. 8.45 centimeters, 3.33 inches. The blade thickness is 3.34 millimeters. That's 0.1315 inches. Pretty good thickness of stock here. Blade depth. So that's the dimension from the spine to the cutting edge and it's biggest over here on the end, as I mentioned earlier. 2.16 centimeters, 0.849 inches. The uh, thickness of the edge behind the grind, and so that's right after the final grind, right there. So that's right there before you get to the flat of the edge, right there, how thick it is between 0.7 millimeters, which is 0 0.0275 inches. Now, I have sharpened this thing several times. I've been doing so many different cut tests on this thing. Uh, you might be able to see it from there that this has got a convex grind on it. Now let me show you a surprise of the day. I've got a second one. <laughs> and this one's got a, you know, just a regular 20 degree grind on either side. And it's just slightly under, it's about 67, 68, 0 0.67, 0 0.68 millimeters behind the grind right there. And you can see this and I know I'm interrupting my dimensions. Take a look at this knife. Very, very shiny here, and it's very rough here. I was doing my cut tests 
right there at that spot. That's why I had the green tape there to guide me for my cut tests. Uh, and I marked it D2 because that's what the claim is. And so that's how I was doing my cut tests, doing a lot of push cut tests uh, with my scouring pads. And so I'm going to have to resharpen this knife uh, once it comes time to use the thing. But, uh, you know, I did want to mention, you know, the thickness behind the grind. And it's, you know, when it's new, it's a little bit nicer. You can also see something else. This one's got wear lines that go along the blade right there. And that's because I forgot to put tape along the side of the knife here when I sharpened it on my work sharp. Uh, my work sharp scratches the bevels on blades, and so I have to put tape on the side in order to stop that from happening. So uh, I'm definitely keeping this one for myself. And this one, once I've got it resharpened and made pristine again, is going to one of my Patreon supporters in just a couple of days. <laughs> Back to the sizes. Time for the handle. Handle length, 12 centimeters, 4.72 inches. Grip area, 9.86 centimeters, that's 3.88 inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.2 centimeters, that's 0.472 inches. The handle depth, and as I said, it's over on the end here again, 2.42 centimeters, that's 0.954 inches. Total length of this knife with the blade deployed is from the tip of the blade to the tip of the handle back here, 20.3 centimeters, almost 8 inches exactly. Very close to that. How much does this knife weigh? 126 grams, 4.45 ounces. So you've got an 8-inch knife that's just under 4.5 ounces. I'm calling it very good. Very good indeed. How much does this knife cost? Well, let me give you the regular prices, and you have to figure out your own math for the blue one being 24% less than that, and the black one is 19% less than that. In US dollars, $36.99. In Canadian dollars, $47.43. Euros, 30.52. Pound sterling, 27.15. And that's as of the very end of February. Well, this is the second last day of February when I'm recording this. So let's pan out and take a closer look at this thing. No, you don't pan out, you zoom out. You pan over and you zoom in. Sometimes my brain just doesn't get the words quite right. So ignore that stuff, eh? So we've got a knife that uh, has a saber grind. So that's a flat grind that just comes up partway, doesn't come up to the spine. I really wish they would have made this a high saber grind. If uh, the grind would come up to, you know, leave an eighth of an inch flat here, or even just half of this, if you left half of that's almost, you know, like three sixteenths. If they left three sixteenths flat and brought that up, you would be able to get a thinner edge behind the grind and you'd still have a very robust blade we've got a flipper tab and you've got some jimping right there and the flipper works quite well it's quite a big flipper the jimping is designed for doing light switch mode to pull back and when you get the weight of this blade turning you know that you've got more weight on the end than you have anywhere else because it's thicker and deeper this way you know it starts flying and it goes very well the push method doesn't work all that well you can get it sometimes to go it's much easier just to do the light switch method on this knife. I'm sure there's people that can do the push down method and have it work, but you know, light switch method is my go-to method on this. You've got a nice big stop pin and that's a good thing. The stop pin just rests in there nice and thick. Uh, I'll give you the dimensions, the diameter of that stop pin on the screen right here. You've got a nice pivot and you can use a large flat screwdriver to take it apart if you need to. And back here, we've got Torx, and uh, I think that's a number nine Torx, maybe number eight. And that comes apart. Uh, lock bar insert is right in there. And then here we have this greatest annoyance, the pocket clip. It's annoying for a couple of reasons. It's 
not a very deep carry, so you've got lots of knife sticking out, almost an inch. And this thing just looks odd. You've got this curvy line, you know, there's no straight lines on this pocket clip anywhere. And yet, this whole thing is straight lines. You know, you've got a straight line up, straight line over, straight line up. You know, straight line over, you know, those, that V kind of shape that you have going back and forth here. Yes, it's scooped out, so you've got a bit of a curve there. But everything else is straight lines. Straight line, straight line. Very gentle curve here. But it's just straight lines everywhere. And yet they've got this pocket clip that just looks very, very weird. And they've used this exact same pocket clip on several other Fura knives, of course, just changing the color. Functional, yeah, the pocket clip works. It holds well. It's got a nice design here to pull onto the pants. It fits onto the pocket quite well. But terrible placement because you've got almost an inch sticking out. Uh, let's get those shorts and I'll show you. So there you go. It sounds pretty dramatic, but <laughs> to be honest with you, I really don't hate it that much. But I know that there are some guys that will hate it. And uh, that's unfortunate. But yeah, you've got almost two inches sticking out right there, right around two inches, just under an inch. It's very easy to grab and pull out though, that's for sure because uh, it holds very well and you've got texture there to grab onto. It cuts fairly well, especially for being how thick it is behind the grind. Uh, you guys are asking me, is this real D2 steel? I don't know, but it's a good steel. My cut tests are revealing that it cuts pretty much as well as D2 does. I don't like my cut tests yet. I've been trying so many different things and I'll just briefly show you what I'm doing. See, I've got a big cutting board, nice and thick, and I cut these little pieces off and um, I'll use this knife to show you. And I line it up with the paint there and I push down and cut through until it goes all the way through. And, you know, and then I've cut that piece off. And that's what I do over and over and over again until it gets so dull that I can't cut paper very well with it. Just using regular 20 pound uh, copy printer paper. And that's how I'm doing my tests. Comparing it to D2, I did two different knives with D2, Ontario Rat with D2, and what was the other knife that has D2? Oh, it's upstairs. And this thing has very close to the same amount of... Um, cuts that it did before it got too dull to cut paper. So this might just be D2. I'm not saying for sure that it is. Other things that I like about this knife, it comes with a really nice tip on here. I rounded this one off just a little bit uh, on my work sharp. That's another reason why this one's going to go away to a new home. Probably. Probably this is going to the Patreon winner this, this uh, prize at the end of February, beginning of March. It looks nice. Nice sharpness choil here. Comes out to a good spot. Nice plunge there. Good satin finish. Good finish on the uh, anodization. This purple coloring. I like the bearings. I'll show you the inside of this. I'll show you the pictures of the bearings and everything right now. Um, there's no jimping anywhere. I kind of like that. Well, there is some jimping on the flipper tab right here, but nowhere else. It's very easy to get in here because the way they've cut that out, they've milled that out, I should say. It's very easy to get your thumb in there and unlock the knife. If you are right-handed, it is super easy to do. If you're left-handed, it's not hard either. You just have to move your fingers a little bit more but you get used to it in a hurry. I want to thank my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, all you have to do is send me through Patreon $2 a month and you plug in your credit card numbers and they draw it automatically at the end of the month. And every month you'll be put in for a draw for one of the knives that I reviewed that month. And it'll be a knife that is sort of in the average price of the knives that I've reviewed. So it's not going to be the cheapest knife no way. I'm not that kind of guy. And it won't be the most expensive knife either. <laughs> I'm not that kind of guy either. I'm generous, but not quite that much.
So there you go. And if you just give a thumbs up to the video, that's great. If you like, share, subscribe, comment, all those great things. I'm not always the fastest getting back to the comments, but I try to reply to every comment on every video if I possibly can. So if you are in the market for a new knife and uh, you kind of like the look of this, maybe in a different color, but you sort of like the styling, uh, you like how well the action works on this thing, then uh, you know consider buying one of these. There are other brands that um, have this exact same knife. Uh, F F in Frog. I'll put the name on the screen right here. Uh, that you can get from Amazon or whatever. And there's other brands as well. Uh, this knife is a rebrander knife. As you can see, there's no brand names anywhere, no model names anywhere, nothing like that. That's because there's a company in China that makes these knives in bulk, and then other companies can buy them and sell them as if they are their own. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's totally legal, but it sometimes can confuse buyers like that rebranders and Fura is one of those brands that doesn't mean they do that with all of their knives but uh with i think probably the majority of Fura's knives you can find the exact same knife sold by another brand name online and so that doesn't mean that the other brand is stealing the design and it doesn't mean that Fura is stealing it from somebody else it's just the nature of the business uh rebrander companies can do that um, a company like Y Start, probably about half of their knives are rebranders and about half of their knives are their own brands. And so it's really hard to tell with them. A company like Ganzo, they make their own knives at their own factory. And that's why their name's plastered all over every single one of their knives. You know, unlike Y Start, where half of the knives say Y Start and half the knives look like this, they don't say anything on them. So it is a confusing marketplace. And, uh, that's just the nature of the Chinese knife market right now. But it seems to me that they are using good quality parts when they're making everything. This is genuine titanium. This quite likely is genuine D2. And I know for sure that it is a decent knife. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you guys in March. Well, I might have one more video in February. We'll see. <laughs> Until then, remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.